Just a quick video on how I use the Creality Otter Light Scanner. There's a few people having trouble with this. I reckon they can't get a good scan out of it and the software is crap. Now, the software is not the best, but you can get a good scan out of it and this is the way I do it. What I'm going to scan today is this impact driver. I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm basically going to scan the bottom and the battery. Now I'm going to scan the top. I'm not going to piece them together, but I'm going to do it in one scan. So what I do to start with is, forget the fact that this has got spots on it, I'm not using, I'm not using uh, marker mode. I'm basically just standing it up on its end. And that's the, that's the way I've been there. It's the best way I've found to do it. Over to the uh, scanner software. First of all, make sure that your bridge is connected. Make sure your scanner is connected. Then get a new project. YouTube impact driver. Normal, medium, geometry. Preview. Start on something which is feature rich. Press start, and as you can see, I'm starting to scan it now. So I'm scanning around the top. Now then I'm not going straight onto the top, I'm going around the corners. Because that way that's where you keep the features in. See how I've got the handle in as well at the bottom of the screen. That's a feature. If I went more to the top, I'd lose that. I'd lose that to start with until I get it all in. Now I've got this corner to get in. That belt grip's really difficult because it's shiny. We'll see how we get on with it. Now then, so back up a little bit to where I'm now. And let's start going up and down a touch. Up and down. Up and down. Until I can get as much in as I can. Now I'm not worried about capturing this box because I've got to crop that box out. And I'm not worried about not getting underneath that battery too much. I mean obviously I can just lower the angle a little bit and get some of it in but I'm not worried if I don't get too much in. Now then what I'm looking for here now is again it's all green. So you've got bits which are slightly on the on the ready pink side. Those are bits which I haven't scanned properly yet. Just a little bit there, look down the base. And there he goes, green. Trying to keep features in there as well. There's a bit here which is pink. In the gaps, the cracks of that. And the joins of the battery. Again, now that I want some features down the bottom here now, so I can. I can then transition to do the other part. So, let's have a look how I've done. Just come round here. See if I can do up a little bit just to get that top of that battery in. Round that clip. Okay, let's pause the scan. And have a look how we've done. It doesn't look too bad. As I say, don't worry about them bits now, because that's going to, them, them, them bits will all come in shortly. What I'm interested in now is whether I've got a good scan around this area, because that is the bit which is going to help me get the top bit. Okay, so I'm going to complete that scan. I'm going to level that up now. Make sure I'm on the ring rectangular collect. Make sure that I'm on the rectangular selection tool. And I'm going to come up there. And I'm going to crop that off. I'm 
I'm going to call it there, I'm going to crop that off. Okay, so therefore now I've got the bottom, the sides. This is a few bits here, look. So now I've got it to the top, and now a little bit on the front of the battery at the top. So, take the impact driver, place it on my turntable that way up now. So, looking at the scanner, looking at the image now, I've got this bit in OK. So if I can start on this bit by pointing the scanner at this bit, wrong side, this bit there now with that clipping. So if I start pointing it there now and build up, I should be alright. Click, click on continue scan. Right, it's, see how it's got it now. Let's start scanning. Now then, I've got to go up and I've got to go round. Up and round. But I keep coming back down to the bit that I've already got, which is the base. Okay. So I'm going to just fill them top back, see? And as you start to build up, there in the back here now, look, see, keep the base in, come up and do some of the top. And as you start to fill it in, so I'm going to come down to the base now because I've got the base to come right past the the very tip of the back and then I'm going to keep the tracking as I go up the sides if I'd have gone too high there then there's not enough features in it so I'll come down to feature rich up to not, up to not yet scanned down to feature rich up to not yet scanned ok so now I'm building that up now it's pink and I'm now making it green now then as I come around this corner now, this is going to be a tricky bit because the end is round. So I'm going to feature it down by the trigger and up to the scat, up to the bit where the where the tool bit goes in. See? Didn't lose tracking. It's brilliant. Okay, so now it's green. Now then, see I'm missing some on the top now. So keep it on feature rich and let the rest of it get built up itself. I haven't got much around that chuck. So by keeping on feature rich round it, that actual chuck then it should go green. Feature rich. Up to where it hasn't gone green. Pause it, and look where we are. Oh, I'm missing some water there, look. Oh, that's a shame. Right at the very back. Now then, the way I'll probably get that bit is to drop it over on its nose. Come round the side. Start the scan again. Go for somewhere that you've already done. There, I've got it. See how we pick it up. And then just come round that side. Nice and gently. So it just picks it up. Stop. Come on.
a little bit round that round where the chuck goes in. Let's turn it round and where is it? It's on that underneath part isn't it? So I'm gonna start again and I'm gonna point it at the see, point it at the scat on a feature each part. And then you'll get it back in again. Stop it. Where am I? It's all nice and green there, so that should be. It should be an OK scan. So let's complete the scan. Get off the nonsense. If you ever lose where you am, just press that button down the bottom right, bottom left, sorry. There is one annoying thing about this software is the fact that you can't use a spice mouse with it. You've got to do it all with the, with the normal mouse. It makes navigating 3D images really difficult. Not very really good using the mouse to do this. Okay, accept it. There's just one little piece there. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so now I've got what I think is a fairly half decent image. A bit more here, look. And if I look at it now and I think to myself, there's, bits, there's more, there's something else I've missed here. I could just click continue scan and I could carry on. Now this is a bit now where people fall down, I think. They say on these forums that you can't fuse it with your own settings. And I think it's because people go to process and all that, all that what I like to do is one touch, one click processing where the fusion setting is within the scan now. So stay on the scan tab, press the fusion button, change this to what you want to change the, the settings to, and I'll say, let's say point 0.2, and click apply. Now this does take some time to do this, it takes a few minutes. So I'll cut forward to when it's done. Okay, so there's the scan, or should I say the point cloud, and as you can see, it's pretty good. This is a little bit round this clip, that's difficult to see in there, but that clip it's really shiny that is. Let's pick that up a tray without any scanning spray. Okay, now we get to process. Now we can get to mesh. Let's just mesh it at a million triangles. No smoothing. No hole filling. 
which processes a little bit faster. But again, I'll bring you back at the end. Okay, there we are meshed. Now that, I think, is a decent scan. How long has that took by? 10, 15 minutes? No mismatching. You can't see where I've chopped that off. We've pitted it back in a tree. Done with one scan. And if you want to go one step further and do colour mapping, There you go. Oh, I personally don't use this feature. A bit of a gimmick, I think this is, but, uh, but some people like it. I mean, it hasn't, got, it hasn't got that square there, has it? Where that logo is on the back. But if you have a look at the mesh, the mesh is fine. Texture is out. So I don't really buy that too much. Then, my workflow then is to export the model as an STL. Drop it on my desktop. As you can see, I've got a few in there now. But if I then go to driver and open, it's default to opening up mesh mixer, which is a bit old, but it's free and it works. Okay, so this is the impact driver now fully scanned and opened up in mesh mixer. I've just aligned it to the uh, coordinate system. Just done that off camera. Pretty simple, but uh, boring to watch. So just to finish off then, I think this is a more than usable scan. It's got all the details in the nuts on the end there. The detail around the handle. More than usable. Brought out that belt clip there, which is a silver part. And we've got a couple of holes there, which is obviously for another video, maybe to uh, fill them in. Put all the details there. You could easily throw that into Fusion and make a holder for it. Or make something to adapt to it. So there you go then. The auto light. More than usable. Thanks for watching.